thanks everyone. And uh, it's been an interesting afternoon. I think there's been a there's been a variety of talks. But for me, from my perspective, I've heard some policy. I've heard some thing about technology. I've heard different ideas. Uh, and this talk, if you like, is the empirical talk, the bottom-up talk rather than the top-down talk. And uh, because that's the way I work, and I think that's what's important to actually get a, a handle on what's actually happening in the island. Uh, it, 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 it's the way to go about. So when we set off to put the slot in, I gave Gunter the title of the Canary Islands as a hub for global technology services and technology startups. And that's, uh, that was our t t title that we went with, that because that's what I'm doing here. And uh, this is perfectly possible, and this is going to happen in the next few years, if we make it happen. So since that, over the last couple of months, I've worked with various people from our community uh, to draw in ideas. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, it's okay, recording. right. It's you can, uh, uh, I've worked with people to uh, draw in various ideas of what we can do, what we should be doing, what the community should be doing to actually lift up this situation uh, and build a community here that can support uh, a digital industry. Uh, so hence Steve Purvis and other members of the Tech and Biz Meetup Group. Uh, Robert is also here with me today, and he's going to. I'm going to ask, him, invite him to join in on some of the later conclusion slides. So, who and why? Uh, I'm an engineer. I've worked for about 12 years in the scientific sector, oil and gas, producing commercial software, analysing seismic data. Very specialist, lots of maths, 3D visualisation. But uh, I've worked hands-on with technology. I've led software teams, and I've took. Uh, I took my last company up through venture capital stage until and grew from around eight employees up to around 50 strong now. Uh, what I'm doing here is because I've, I've, I've now relocated here and uh, I'm talking to you today because of the Tenerife Tech and Biz Meetup Group which Gunt has already introduced. So what I'm going to give today is not fact or theory, I'm going to give some perspective uh, my perspective and some perspective I've picked up from other people. Observations of six months intensive networking for me on the island since I moved here first time after visiting for years. And a vision and plenty of open questions to, to, to be had. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm offering in this, in this presentation. So, experience of the meetup group. Does, does anybody know, well, who knows about the meetup platform? Has anybody used it? So three in the room, okay. So meetup.com is a, it's an internet platform, it's a type of social network if you like, but it's a platform that makes it very easy for communities of people to come together uh, around particular subjects. Uh, it, it provides an online platform for people to talk, to actually get together in physical locations, have meetings, and there's the online side to a, a real community. If you, uh, what I say is if, if you go home to your home cities and, and things like that, Log on to meetup.com and look at, look at for meetups near you, you will find many, tens, and Berlin you'll find hundreds. Many of those meetups will be technical focused, business development focused, will be uh, tech, there'll be meetups for creatives, designers, engineers, because uh, what you're seeing is in a lot of the cities around the world that have strong entrepreneurial communities, technology hubs, they are using these platforms so that the communities are self-organising and self-educating and self-training for almost uh, a type of highly networked self-support within the community. That's in between the, the finance, <coughs> the public institutions, in between all those programmes in the white space, if you like. The actual uh, engineers, the entrepreneurs, business developers come together to support each other, support that business, that, that business ecosystem. And Meetup.com is one of the major platforms. Uh, came to Tenerife six months ago, there was, there was none. Since then, m myself and a few other local entrepreneurs started the Tenerife Tech and Biz Meetup Group with the objective of bringing together the international and native communities on the island. Because the idea was that, well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of skilled, there's a lot of local skilled people, especially in tech and creative sectors. Uh, but there was an untapped uh, international community, we felt. People here working 
uh, in technology and completely invisible. And that's, uh, that's turned out to be the case. Now the, the, term, the groups around the hundred strong, about 25% of that are internationals, working like myself, quietly from bedrooms, from offices, exporting high-tech services from the islands to a global market on a very small scale. Uh, I've met people from the UK, from the USA, Estonia, Germany, Russia, uh, and they're all here, they've decided to come and live here. <coughs> and their businesses, their skills, allow them to continue to work, to earn money, and in the more entrepreneurial ones of them, to continue building businesses. So that's why I think the meetup.com, the Tenerife Tech and Business Meetup Group is, a, is an excellent first step in realising some of the potential that there is here in the community, in the technology and business development community that's already on the island. So at the beach slide, of course, uh, I know it's a cliche, but uh, lifestyle. Lifestyle is a major attractor. <coughs> Nobody sits on the beach on the laptop because of the glare, anyway, it wouldn't work. But the beach is on the doorstep, and even though you're in working, in the indoors, working, working incredibly hard in order to make these businesses work, it's the lifestyle, the culture, everything that makes it good to <coughs> holiday here makes this place a good place to work in Tenerife and in the Canaries. So lifestyle is a major attractor. Uh, Lifestyle is a major attractor to talent, to skills. Skills are a major attractor, and talent pools are a major attractor to VC funds, to external investment, to commercial investment in the business. And that is the type of thing I think we want to attract to, to these islands. Uh, so why are the people here again? Lifestyle is one. And because they can be. So remote working is becoming even, even more uh, possible every day. My, my, my office week is spent on Google Hangouts and Skype, working remotely with software developers on product, projects in their room. We push source code back and forward. And really that, that's possible because of the collaboration tools you have available now, the internet connectivity that's available on the island. It's possible to work in that type of environment. Whether it's a freelance, like myself, uh, that dip in and out of other people's teams, or whether it's permanent uh, employees. More and more companies, I don't have statistics on this, but more and more companies are now working remote where more larger and larger percentages of their workforce do not come to a, a central office. The leaders in this type of, the companies who lead this type of trend are completely decentralized. They, 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 they work via Skype, via online meetings. They have no office costs practically. They have very little infrastructure costs. They're very light. But technology businesses are starting to work like this more, more and more all the time. So location is becoming less and less important. So this skilled class of people, this class of people who can work in this area, can choose the lifestyle and the locations they can live. And that could well be here. I think, I think we will see over time, organically, more and more migration <coughs> of international skilled people to come to work here in this type of environment. So the question is, can such an international community help support and develop an international digital industry in, in the Canaries? And uh, I, have, I think it can, I believe it can. The, uh, I've, since I've been here, I've, I've, I've met a lot of uh, local and native uh, people, people trying to start up companies, people working, software engineers, designers working in local companies here. And uh, uh, they, they have challenges. English is a big challenge for them, even though the, the overall English level, I think, is, is good. Back in the UK, I worked in a mixed office with Swedish, Portuguese, Dutch. And the, the, the level of English here is, is, is good, but there's a step. There's, for some reason, they're not breaking out of the local market, which doesn't really exist. And they're not breaking out of the Spanish market. In order to do that, they need connections out of Spain into an international community. And that's what an international community can come, that it can bring. I've got a little graph here that's pulled off a, a LinkedIn infographic, just to, to give some perspective. So the average number of LinkedIn users probably peaks at between 100 and 200. Uh, a lot of people who are very active have a lot more connections than that. So if you imagine uh, 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 bringing somebody with 10 years of experience here to the island, the connections that they bring, uh, first level connections of say of 150. 
the combinatorial effect of that, that second level of connections, are 20,000 connections. So you, you bring highly skilled, well-connected people into here who have connections across different industries, across different geographies. And for example, myself, I've worked in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I know people in oil and gas multinationals, I know HPC companies, I know providers, Halliburton, stuff. So I've developed my network and lived in my network for the last 10 years. And now I'm sitting in La Laguna do, doing my stuff. And there are people like me around. They are resources that can be tapped into by the, by, the, by the companies on the island, if we can find them and bring them together. Uh, the other thing is talent pool. If it, by bringing in experienced people uh, and being able to attract international people here to work, then you're going to be able to increase the talent pool in a way that you can't through just pumping people out of, out of universities. And I think by bringing those people and giving, you know, Bring those people in, if, if companies set up in a, if, yeah, if the digital industry starts to increase around an international community like that, you know, we're talking long term, five years or and beyond, but it, it, it could well stop the immigration of all the young skills, as it were, because we have a, an issue at the moment. If you leave the university here with a computer science degree, your best shot, and most people's parents tell them their best shot is to get to England, get to Ireland, and then whatever. And bringing, I think, uh, an international skills base to the island and retaining the talent that is naturally generated here are, are two key things for building the, this digital industry. So, uh, at the, the title site talked about technology startups and it talked, talked about uh, high tech <coughs> services. That's where we started. What we're really talking about now is a digital industry. And that's a pretty good definition of a, a digital industry and that's all inclusive that is any product that can be created and delivered digitally and it is perfectly possible to be doing that from these islands and to be serving a, a global marketplace from these islands that's new media software infrastructure services the whole the whole caboodle because geography really isn't an issue for those there's still challenges because we are in the middle of nowhere but the, the digital industry, the impact of those challenges aren't as great. Maybe seasonal, seasonal variation in airfares and stuff. That might affect companies. But really, geography, I don't think, is a challenge in this type of industry. But this industry doesn't yet exist on the island. There is not something I would call an industry. There is a lot of things going on. There is a lot of things starting. Uh, but it is not yet a critical mass. It isn't at the point where we could call it an industry, but we could take it there. So, this slide is a, is a review, if you like, of where we think we are now and where we need to be in terms of a few key building blocks. So, this is, this is a proposition, this is a, a, a vision and where we, where we think we need to move to. So the focus, the digital industry in the Canaries serving an international market. Building blocks, expertise. Like I said, here there is a lot of <coughs> great urban tech ex expertise. I think uh, I've, met, uh, I've met a hell of a lot of people since I've been here on, on the island and there are some really impressive, there are some really impressive people, projects and skills. Uh, what needs development is marketing, sales and the business development side of taking those that technical talent and, and turning it into uh, product services on an international basis because the local market is non-existent outside of publicly funded uh, projects. Uh, industry support. We, uh, I, I count 17 different institutions on the island offering some type of service or course and there's some great stuff going on, the Camera de Commercio the uh, Apprendi URL, the PCTT, they all offer entrepreneurship courses, there are, there are small incubators going on, there are various things going on, but it's uh, fragmented and, and it's confused, it's incredibly confusing. Uh, everyone has their own website, it's very, and it's native focused, it's all in Spanish, and it's completely <coughs> inaccessible to an international community. Very, very hard for anybody, uh, not, not native Spanish, to find out actually what's going on and start contributing and start getting uh, involved. So what's really needed is uh, one front door 
what, it needs to be very simple to, for people anywhere to come here, here and say, oh, here's Tenerife, here's the community, here's the industry, here's our accessor, and be able to, to actually to, to get in. And for that front door to be reliable and able to execute and deal with the people that, that come through it. And it needs to be transparent. People need to know what it is and uh, how it works. <coughs> Communication. Uh, one thing about the tech investment that we've gone from the start, it's, it's all in English, which is a big challenge for some of the, for the native people who, who join in, but they make a huge effort and they, they speak in English and they can. It's just a matter of being, you have to speak in English. <laughs> and the truth is, what needs development is that on the communication side is there needs to be a lot more in English, both internally on, on the island and in the broadcast internationally. If I Google for Tenerife technology, Tenerife startups, I get, actually now I get the Tenerife tech page coming up as one of the first hits. The meetup.com Tenerife tech page. Uh, other than that, in English, there's no, if, if there was somebody externally looking, there's nothing here telling me there's anything going on. There's certainly nothing persuasive about why I should be looking closer to here for, for services, for establishing a business, <coughs> etc. Which is a real pity when we have Zek and Rick and some real incentives for companies to actually be here if they only knew about it. Talent pool and community development. Uh, I think a lot of that was native. There was some native, there was some there was some local networking groups uh, already active. Uh, they were they were very tech tech focused. But this is something I believe very strongly in, and the, the meetup group is doing is just bringing together a wider community, international and native, and it's it's energising them. It isn't just about uh, getting together for a few beers. <coughs> It's actually, it needs to be about some, doing something productive. At each of our meetings, we, we pick a topic and we at least share information. We connect people and, and get them lined up for their interests. But that, that community, I can't understate the importance of getting that uh, community developed to be as inclusive as possible of everybody who lives and passes through the, the island. Accelerator programs. Uh, if we're serious about actually building uh, businesses here, we need serious investment. We can't expect, uh, well, we, we can't expect, and it just doesn't work, that if the entrepreneurial projects, the people behind them, can't access the seed capital that they need to actually get their businesses started. Yeah, there are training courses, how to be an entrepreneur, lean, lean courses, various courses, environmental courses, but it lacks the real investment needed to support those projects and get them started. What is here, there are some incubators, there's a small pool of mentors, and there are companies in local housing, both via PCTT, the Innovo Park, ULL, and a local incubator program uh, that offers housing and support. But what is really needed is that type of mentoring, uh, that type of program with seed and early stage capital investment. <coughs> it's able to bring in international mentors from our side to support those businesses and to provide the aftercare for those companies. Uh, and the last, international marketing and overseas sales support. One of the biggest challenges for, for I think, a small business. Uh, there are some small spill grants I've heard of. I haven't been able to find where they are. But the people I talk to say there are some. But I, the, the, I think they're difficult to get. And for... I think for, for a small company anywhere trying to actually sell their product uh, and market their, their, their product, no matter where you are, this is, this is critically important. A, a small team can't afford to, uh, to uh, themselves go on sales, marketing trips, extensively. <coughs> so what is needed is some well-funded trade missions, some well-organized ways for local companies to be able to step up and build sales networks. Trade missions is another excellent way where actually groups of companies come together and go, go out to, uh, to, to, to other cities in the world. And uh, yeah, well, so they don't have to do it themselves. They're, they're funded, they can come, come together, be funded by local institutions or privately to actually go en masse and make an impact with the companies that are here in the Canaries and, and start 
upping the level of exposure. Uh, in conclusion, is yeah, a digital industry in the Canaries could be serving a global marketplace and marking a significant new economy for the island. That's, I truly believe that. Uh, I'm going to ask Robert, do you have anything else to comment on this? And you, you want to do this? I'd like you to okay. ask Robert to talk through the next slide. Right. My name is Robert Bull. I'm an uh, entrepreneur and business developer in the new media industry. I'm of the Earth is flat generation, a typical example. I live in a finca in Nico, and I have four companies in Holland, and they're still running. That's nice, because now it's 10 degrees, it's raining in uh, Holland, and I'm here. And even today, the weather is better than there. Now, let's start up. Value today is not created by knowledge. Because today we have a new word for knowledge. It's called Google. And it's even mobile, it's here. I have knowledge in my pocket. The knowledge is nothing. Students who just learn something are nothing. Students who don't speak English are nothing in this international world. This guy is from St. Petersburg, from Russia. And he speaks perfectly English. And his business is still running. And he's on holiday. Man, he earns his money. Not only because of knowledge. Not only because he's creative. But he has courage. And if you do business in Russia, you need courage. <laughs> so, I did another thing in Holland. Uh, we built up the game industry. The video game industry. And we decided in Holland not to go into the console between the online and the mobile. It was a good choice. Because we're using other skills than only technical skills. We used our high potential in people who are specialized in marketing. Do you know how Facebook was founded? Do you know how? What it needed to create Facebook? One student and two joints. Joints. That was the moment that his rational, knowledge part of the brain and his emotional, creative part came together. And he had a vision. It's a joke, but I believe that it might be a reason why a lot of new startups are created in the university. Now, what you see here is what we would love to build up the next years in the Canary Islands. Because I think we have a great asset. It's beautiful here. Culture is great. The weather is great. So a lot of people like us want to live here and have a work somewhere else. My companions, my business companions, are come over four or five times a year. Hey, Robert, can you find me in a house? I want to buy something. Yes? That's the generation you want to get here. What we're going to do the next years here on the islands is that we're going to implement this process. This is just a very simple process of creating value. And again, this is a very important driver to create value, creativity. A lot of startups who start here in the university are making a leapfrog, the wrong one. They see something which is possible, enabling technology, they start to make something, and they forget to sell, they forget to exploit whatever they built. And therefore, they have a game, 5,000 users, don't make money with advertisement in game, or another way to monetize what they built. It's a big mistake. So therefore, we have a lot of programmers, also in our team, in, in Meetup, we see a lot of programmers who love to program until deep in the night. It don't make money. So what we do in Mida is make this group visible, but combine these coders, these technical people, with marketeers, sales, and business developers. Because if you team up like that, if you combine those expertises and experiences, you will make money at the end. <coughs> now, to support this process, 
we divided this process in four stages. And the first stage we're in right now, meetup will be big, will grow, run on it to 200% every year. So the next time, my personal obligation is to get in business developers, marketeers, and sales in the south with the next meetup. The next step in this process is very important, is to bring together the right skills, but also bring together buyers and sellers. So we will create a front door for a marketplace to be sure that there are more digital products and companies created here on the island. Collaborating in this process is very important. And we know how, <coughs> I just explained. TeamViewer, Google Hangouts, we all use that stuff. But I stay in my finca, but we're working together daily. And accelerate. That is very important. We don't need all kinds of initiatives here who do a, uh, a day where a few startups come together and are allowed to pitch and then uh, get uh, as a prize a trip <coughs> to the Silicon Valley in, 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 in America. That is not helping a startup. And a startup needs seed money, real seed money. If, for example, he wants to roll out the product fast enough worldwide. So these are just a few examples of what we want to build up the next years. And we want to do it in many ways. We want to use our own team, our own people, our own crowd to build up this capability. And of course, we also need the government. And that's what our ambition is for the next few years here on the island. And it will be a collaboration between the Chichereros, or however the name is of the natives, and the Giris, or whatever you call us. You have not learned to say Chicharreros. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So you still say Chicharreros in a good way? Chicharreros. Okay, you better. Maybe I'm. <laughs> so, like, like Robert said, I, I just want to talk a bit more about some of the activities happening right now because we're going to do this over the next few years. I say we, this is a com community driven effort. There's a few at the moment who are leading the current community are actually stepping up to get people involved in these different activities. So on the meetup front, we have Meetup Tech and Biz, which will continue to grow, but also we've started to build a community directory. One of the things we found was nobody knows where anybody is. And that, that's including the native people, the, the people here, the people who freelance in Santa Cruz don't know there's a company in, a, <coughs> in, in La Laguna. The people in the north don't know there's a company pulling 34 million euros a year revenue sitting in a warehouse in the day here. Pure software. The, it, it's disconnected. There is a, so what, what we started to do is we've opened up uh, a directory. We've started to compile a list of all freelancers, everybody trying to make a mobile phone app, the service providers, all the contacts at uh, universities, sorry, all the, contacts, all, all the programs and contacts at the local institutions to start to build a directory so we can present one place to go for information if you're looking for somebody to work with or if you're looking in contact on the island to go to and speak to about project, work, business, anything. So that's the second component in the meetup, bringing people together. The marketplace is Robert's working on a pitch and match system which will allow people to actually start interacting around jobs. So. Uh, if, if somebody can post up, I have a bit of business here, I need a team. And can, you can start collaboratively to bring people together to actually process bits of work. Yeah? Uh, collaborate. We don't have anything specific happening in there. But accelerate. One of the things that I find incredibly interesting at the moment is there is a private venture. Currently they work on, with the camera the commercial to roll out some training courses around the incubator program. <coughs> But there is a private entity on the island, Alta Vista Ventures, with the ambition to be a fully funded accelerator program. And I think that is the best chance. I think that's an, an excellent that if they get there in the next couple of years to actually marry some serious private venture capital with the projects they're able to run on the island and attract to the island. Because accelerators, is, as well, it's not just about what's just here, it's about mixing in teams and skills from outside as well. So, 
But uh, our key thing is to, key thing, like we're saying, is one place for all the digital natives and immigrants on the, on the island to unite and actually start building this community to provide one consistent front door into it so that we can meet up, market, collaborate, and do that acceleration. And so we can profit together in a global marketplace. So if you want to make contact, and if you want to start meeting and accessing and, and talking to this, this growing community, then the place to go is the meetup.com and look for things happening around Santa, Santa Cruz to Tenerife, and, and you'll find it. Join the group, it meets once a month, and it's a brilliant way to, to actually get to know who's here and, and what's actually going on on the island. The workshop on the, on, on the 26th and 27th of November uh, in the Maritime Hotel, uh, we have a program for, and what Gunter wanted to do was to look at current questions in the Canary Islands during that workshop. And the proposal is that there was a lot of questions around what I've just presented and how we would take that forward and make different aspects of that actually happen. So the invitation is there to join in that workshop and start looking at some of the questions around that plan and around <coughs> the whole issue. <coughs> that was it. Thank you.